for making yourself available today. I think it's important for the citizens of Jonesboro who have an interest in what's going on in their local government to have this kind of access to their leadership. And recently you gave the State of the City address at the February Council meeting. And I'd like to take this opportunity to dig a little deeper into the annual address and really talk about where the city is, what's been accomplished, and where your administration is looking to in the future. So, Mayor, how is the city? The city is in, uh, is in great shape uh, financially. Uh, we ended the year uh, with a, uh, a positive uh, surplus uh, versus having a deficit spending like we've had in the years past. In fact, uh, uh, the city had budgeted a $4.3 million deficit spending, uh, but the city come out with a $2.7 million uh, surplus. Now, a great deal of that was about $2 million that we moved capital improvement projects forward until 11, 2011. So, but the big thing I'm proud of is the $780,000 uh, surplus that we had in our operating in uh, O&M, they call it, O&M operating expenses. And that's the day-to-day -day deal that you have to operate with every day. So I'm extremely pleased that we come in at three quarters of a million dollars. Well, that's good to hear. And I guess it's safe to say that this is certainly bigger than one person. So what key people or events would you accredit John's real success to in 2010? You know, just being mayor uh, is that we sat down, and, uh, Chief Financial Officer and myself, and uh, we're the final ones that on the budget to go to the city council. But let me just say this, and I, I said this in my State of the City uh, address, is that I empowered all the department heads to look at their budget it was their figures, but they had the responsibility and the accountability uh, to look at that budget very closely on a day-to-day -day basis. And they had to make those decisions very quickly. Should we buy an item or should we uh, do any travel or expenses or conferences that we go to? And they watched it very closely and they came in uh, way under budget. So I've got to dedicate the, the success of this to our department heads, uh, and, and the people that's under them. So it's actually the, the, the employees of the city, it's what made that budget happen the way it did at the end. You've talked a lot about 2010 being a year that you budgeted the revenue blind. So what does that mean? And how did that help you and your department heads better manage their budgets? Well, when you get into budgeting process and when you talk about uh, actually going into a budget uh, blind, what, what we said was is that we, we got the department heads to give us all of our expenses, and uh, we did not look at revenue whatsoever. And so once you get all your expenses uh, down on paper from every department, then you go back and you then take the revenue that you anticipate receiving and put that over there to see if there's any shortfall. And so that's what we've done. If we, if we would have told them that we were, let's say, uh, projecting we were going to get X million dollars in, then that might had led them to maybe purchase other things that, uh, that maybe we didn't need to buy this year. So if you do it the other way, we call it revenue blind, meaning we don't look at revenue. That's the last thing we look at. And so what they had to do is go back to their department and make sure that every expense item is that is something that they actually needed in their department. And then once that was done, then we came back and put the revenue over there. And I can tell you by doing that, that that, that uh, process was about two or three times because the expenses far exceeded the revenue. And so uh, once we got that uh, uh, revenue somewhat nailed down to what we thought was actually going to occur, uh, then we went and went back and made our adjustments for the department heads and they were very gracious to move those budgets down to, to tie into the revenue. And that's why at the end we came in with a surplus versus a deficit. Last year, in the midst of a down economy, the voters of Jonesboro supported your request for a sunset public safety tax. So now that that's passed, what are some of the benefits those citizens can see as a direct result of their vote? Well, I'm glad you asked that question because uh, in, in, in August, uh, uh, the citizens of Jonesboro put a lot of faith and trust in this administration. And, and, and the reason for that is it was uh, overwhelmingly at, at the polls showing that the people wanted to continue the same level of service for public safety as they had had in the past. So with that new sales tax, 
the first thing is that we did not have to do any layoffs whatsoever. So our, our uh, employees in the fire department and the police department and 911 all stayed the same. So that tells you that we have the same amount of people out there patrolling uh, the streets and working with our citizens for public safety. The other thing is it will free up monies that we can buy some additional fixed assets, which is basically equipment for the police department uh, and the 911 center that we've been putting off for many years to upgrade that that will help our officers uh, do a much better job, faster uh, and more efficient than they have in the past. So those tax dollars that comes in here will not only help with personnel cost, but it will also help within the, uh, with the equipment that they've been needing for years. And some of that equipment's already been ordered uh, and should be in place uh, no later than probably June of this year. Recently, Jonesboro was recognized by the national media. So I know that has to be a proud thing for you as the mayor. Can you tell us a little about that? Absolutely. Uh, Any time that uh, somebody from the outside the city, uh, a third party, can come in and, and evaluate your city uh, and, uh, and, and rank you that high on, on economic development and what's going on in your city, it's, it's, it's quite evident that, uh, that we have really uh, battled the storm, if you will, on this recession to some degree. And so we're in much better shape than a lot of other cities in, in that regard. So, uh, and when it also says that they look at the quality of life, they looked at several things, and they said that, that Jonesboro is one of the greatest cities to live, work, and raise a family and, and to earn a living. So to me, that's, that's a real plus uh, for us going forward because it tells us something that we already knew, but it's good to hear it from somebody outside and it's also going to help us uh, help recruit other industry and other businesses to Jonesboro. So absolutely, it was, it was a great uh, uh, surprise to us uh, to, to receive that, and we'll certainly use that going forward. Despite all of the challenges that you and your administration had to face, it sounds like 2010 was a banner year. And so far, in 2011, you've hit the ground running. So what are some of the goals you would like to see accomplished this year? Well, currently, uh, we're going to the council Tuesday night, and we're going to uh, ask the council uh, to allow the administration to borrow $10.5 million. And the reason for that is is that interest rates are down, building costs are down, and so what we can do is we can take many of these projects that we've been putting off. In 2011, we will complete the entire pro process of our street and sanitation facility on Dan Avenue and uh, and. Uh, and then the other thing is we're going to be building another new fire station on Highway 1, which was in our master plan to get these uh, fire stations new and put them in the right location. So that will keep our citizens' ISO rating and keep our, our fire ratings down so the premium won't go up. So we've got several things that we're going to be doing. And the other thing is, is that we're looking at some ways to uh, centralize all of our people in one building or very closely to the one building so that we can be more efficient and more effective and add more customer service to the citizens when they come here for anything uh, of need such as a building permit or whatever it may be. So that's one thing we're looking at also. Let's talk about Jonesboro Vision 2030. How did that come to be? Where are you in the process? And what do you hope is the final result of that Commission's efforts? Vision 2030 is, is basically a total comprehensive uh, plan that we're putting together. And the reason for that is, is that uh, in having served on the council for 16 years and been and living here for a number of years, I noticed that a lot of areas were planning, but none of them were tied together. And so we thought that the best way to do that is take, take all this planning process and break it out into various sectors such as quality of life, uh, such as infrastructure uh, and all the things that will tie into making Jonesboro, uh, you know, a great city, which it already is. So that process started several months ago, and uh, I would hope that by the end of 2011 or the first of 2012, we will unveil uh, that that entire plan to the citizens of Jonesboro. And what I've seen so far, uh, the information that's coming in from these subcommittees, it has just been incredible. 
And uh, an example, when you talk about traffic, well, traffic not only takes in the vehicular traffic, but it also takes in biking and cycling and all of those things. So all of those things are being worked at and being put into that one area. And so it's, it's, uh, I think it's going to be a very good plan for us to go by uh, so that we, we need to know if we're go where are we going to be in 2030. Well, the census showed us very clearly that this city has grown at an average of about 2.5% increase every year for the last 20 years. Now, if that holds true, and I think it'll even be larger, but if that's true, and just think with me, 10 years from now, we're gonna be over 80,000 in population, and you add 10 years to that, this city is gonna be over 100,000 in population. So the question is, how do we build, and what do we need to be doing to prepare for that? And that was the big uh, mission for this, was if, it's, if this is gonna occur, then what do we need to be doing now to prepare for that so we'll be ready. And so I think that's the, the big thing that's gonna come out of this plan is that uh, it will help us in engineering, it'll help us in infrastructure. Uh, all the departments that we have here will have to start working towards that plan to get prepared so they would be ready in 2030. Uh, 2030. Earlier you mentioned the census. How did those numbers meet up against your expectations and what advantages or disadvantages can we expect to see as a result of those numbers? Everybody was really excited in Jonesboro. Uh, and we really anticipated that the city of Jonesboro would be at least 70,000 population or over. Uh, but it come in at 67,263, which is great because we were the third fastest growing city in the state of Arkansas out of 500 cities. So that's pretty stout. Now, what does that mean to the city of Jonesboro? Well, first of all, because the numbers have, uh, uh, have risen, we will be able to receive more funds on our state turn back money, which will give us more money in turn to do more overlays and more infrastructure, more signalization, things like that. So if that's gonna occur, uh, we'll start receiving those funds probably in, in March of this year. Now, we budgeted for that increase, a little bit of an increase. And so that's going to help us this year in the budget do more things for the citizens of Jonesboro uh, in regards to the state turn back money. Now, your answer about, or your question about uh, uh, what do I see in the future, I really believe that Jonesboro has, has set itself up to grow dramatically in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And what I mean by that is, is with the new addition of the uh, hospital here, uh, with Baptist coming in here and putting a half a billion dollars, and with the new mall that we've had now for approximately two to three years, uh, with the diver diversified economy that we have, I really believe that we're gonna grow at a much rapid pace than the 2.5. Uh, and if that's the case, then we may be getting closer to that 100,000 population before that 20 years. So that's why I'm real, uh, real excited about this Vision 2030. And when we unveil that, then we're gonna take that all over town and talk to various people and say, here's results of that, what do you think? And so that's gonna have all of our citizens uh, in the same communication as the city is, and that is, here's what we can do for you. Mayor, thank you again for taking the time to sit down and speak with us. And thank you for watching. Until next time, have a great day.